Okay, so quadratic functions. Quadratic functions are, are going to be um, are going to be parabolas, and the the transformations work in the same way that the transformations do for um, for absolute value functions. Okay, so this is kind of a recap of what we were talking about last chapter with the um, with the transformations of absolute value functions. So if you have um, a negative that's outside of uh, the parentheses in front of a, a variable, what this is going to do is reflect over the x-axis. Which in es essence is going to make the parabola open upside down. Okay, it's going to open downwards. Um, okay, and then um, the a value um, out here is going to be um, either a a vertical stretch or compression if we have a number out here okay and this actually works for all functions not just for quadratic functions or absolute values um, so yeah this is going to give us a stretch or a compression a vertical I should say stretch or compression okay and then if the the and that's just for the a there. The, the negative is kind of its own agent that would uh, flip things around, okay? Um, when we're talking about um, the uh, negative in here, this would reflect over the y-axis. Okay, and then um, or the b, this is going to be, since it's inside multiplying the x directly, this would be a horizontal stretch or compression. Okay, and um, you can. Um, it's going to be a stretch or compression um, based on the value of the um, of the variables for a and b. Okay, so it's a little different for both of them. So when I've got a vertical change, when I'm talking about a here, um, if uh, a is uh, if a is less, actually the absolute value of a is is greater than one, then I'm going to have a stretch. Okay, and if the um, the absolute value of a is less than one, then we've got a compression. Okay, works a little differently with uh, the horizontal changes. So we're we're going to have a stretch here when our b value is less than one, while the absolute value of b is less than one, and we'll have a compression when it's more than one. Okay. Um, all right, and then when we have uh, something added or subtracted, so you know C could be positive or negative, so you could have something subtracted instead. But the C value when, um, is going to move things left or right. So it's going to be a translation um, that will move things left or right. And something added to the... Um, to the end or subtracted from the end will move things up or down. Okay, so these things are both called translations when we're shifting the whole thing up or down. Okay, so for this particular one, my translation here, like if you think it's going to be actually the vertex of the parabola, would be the point negative C, D. Well, that actually depends if we got a B value in there. But um, when, we're, when we're adding something that's going to move things left, and when we're subtracting in there, it's actually going to shift things to the right. So that's a little counterintuitive. Up or down is like you would think it would be where adding will move the thing up 
and subtracting will move it down we're on, when we're on the outside. Okay, so that, there's a lot to uh, digest there, but that's kind of what we went over um, in the last last uh, chapter. So um, we've got a new parent graph. Okay, so we're, our parent graph is going to be y equals x squared. That's the simplest possible quadratic uh, equation that we can have. And it's going to be a parabola. Uh, so you've probably seen these before. But let's say you hadn't seen it before and you're asked to graph it. You could always make an xy table. Okay, So I can just think about the equation y equals x squared. And I can start plugging in some different values. So I just have some convenient ones here. If I plug in a 0 for um, x, well, 0 squared is 0. So that's what I get. right? And you don't necessarily need to write these all in, but I just I'm showing you my thinking here. So when I plug in 1 for x, 1 squared is 1. I get out 1. Okay. When I plug in a 2, 2 squared is 4. And I get a 4. Okay. And I'm just going to start doing these in my head. Because really what I'm doing is just squaring these x values. right? So when I square 3, I'm going to get 9. When I square negative 1, remember that's negative 1 times itself. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 2 times itself is positive 4. Negative 3 times itself is positive 9. Okay, so let's plot these points. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and then 3, 9. It goes all the way to the top of the graph I provided here. Okay, and we get the mirror images because I'm going 1 left, 1 up, 2 left, 4 up, and 3 left, 9 up. Okay, and then you get a visualization. This is going to be sort of a U-shaped curve. Okay, my vertex is going to be right down here. And yeah, you can, it's not a V made of straight line segments like uh, absolute value function is. It's curved. Okay, it's going to look something like that. And you could graph more points, but that's enough to get an idea. Okay, so that's our parent graph. graph and you'll definitely want to have um, it memorized, at least what those first five critical points are going to look like. Okay? Because we're going to use that to, to do transformations on more complicated functions. And that's what's coming next. Okay, So I've got my parent graph right there. Here, I'll cover up that work a little bit. But this says um, describe the transformations from the parent graph. And then we're going to graph this and include five critical points. Okay, um, So I'm going to think of this using... Um, using my transformations. Okay. Now, if you're looking at this transformation guide I've got here, I'm thinking, well, where, do the, where are the parentheses? How can I tell where the 3 is? Well, if you were to, I wouldn't want you to do this, but if you drew in parentheses like this, that would actually be different because then you'd be squaring 3x. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. So that's not going to work. But if you did put in parentheses, you could put them in around the x, because then I'm just squaring the x, okay? The 3 isn't squared here, okay? So that might be helpful um, when I'm looking at the 3 and trying to figure out, <clears throat> is that 3 inside the parentheses or on the outside? And it, it's on the outside, okay? So that means, um, well, whenever I have a coefficient in front of the parentheses or in front of the x, I know I've got a, a stretch or compression of some sort, okay? So let's figure this out. So remember... Um, when we were looking at um, absolute value, if I have a coefficient that's more than one, it's, it would make the, the v narrower, right? And the same thing is going to happen with these parabolas. So since this value is more than one, this is going to be narrower than the parent graph. So I'm kind of thinking of that in my head. That's going to be helpful, OK? Now I'm looking at the location of the 3. The 3 is on the outside. So I know that this is going to be a vertical change. Okay, so I've got a vertical change. That just means that the, 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 uh, the vertex is going to stay put once I find the vertex, but those points are going to move just up or down, okay, because I've got a vertical change. So I'm kind of just thinking in my head, if, those, if these points, let's say these two points, can only move up or down, well, if I move them down and kept the, the vertex in the same place, this would end up wider, right? And that's not what I want because I know this is going to be narrower. So then I know that they're going to have to move up, okay? So they're going to move up something like, I, I don't know where exactly, but I'm just putting some random 
points in here. And if I did move them up, it would give me a narrower parabola, right? Moving those points up will give me a narrower parabola. So that means I know this is going to be stretching. So this is a vertical stretch. OK? All right. And then I still have to deal with the plus 1. And that's on the outside, right? We're not squaring that, so that's on the outside of the parentheses that I drew. So this is going to move everything up 1, OK? So you know you could make an xy table, but I'm just thinking, let's just do this with the transformations. So if on my parent graph the vertex is at 0, 0, now I know I'm just going to move that up 1. So hey, here is my parent graph. Or oh, sorry. Here is my vertex of my, my new one. It's at 0, 1. Okay? And then I'm going to kind of draw what, I, what I'm going to call my ghost points. Same thing as last chapter. But I'm just thinking, well, if there was no stretch or compression, what would the next set of points look like? I'd go up 1 to the right one, up 1 to the left one. And then looking over here, I'd go up 4 to the right 2 and up 4 to the left 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. I'm going up 4 to the right and left two from the vertex, not from the origin. Okay, so this is what it would look like if it was just shifted up one um, without the three. But I'm still gonna do the vertical stretch. Okay, so now I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is the floor of my parabola here, I'm looking at the height of these. I wanna stretch these points. So these points are all gonna move up away from the floor. So right now, this first set of points is one unit above the floor. Okay, but I want to triple that because my factor here is three. So instead of it being one unit above the floor, I want it to be three units from the floor, right? One, two, three. So I'm really tripling the height of those first two points off of the floor, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Looking at this, I can see, hey, this is four units above the floor. I want to triple that height. So um, three times four would be 12. So I want it to be 12 units above. So hey, here's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How about that? I left just enough room on this provided graph. So it's going to be all the way at the top of the graph. But that's because this is now going to be 12 units above the floor instead of 4. I tripled that height. And same thing over here. It's just a mirror image. Okay. And then I can sketch in my parabola. And I've got a narrower parabola than the original one by way of a vertical stretch. Also, the whole thing is shifted up one unit. OK? All right. Um, let's look at this next one. OK, so I've got a couple things to deal with here. Um, so I like to just find the vertex first, actually. This one already has the parentheses in. So some people are going to say, oh, negative 4, negative 1 is the, um, is the vertex. But they're incorrect because they're just changing the sign of that and taking that one. And that, that works if the two wasn't there. But you want to take the whole contents of the parentheses and set it equal to 0. Then this is going to give you your x value. Okay, I'm going to solve that for x, so I'll subtract 4, then divide by 2. Sorry, the bell's ringing here. Okay. There's my x value, and then my y value is just this. So my y value is going to be negative 1. So the vertex is going to be the point negative 2, negative 1, not negative 4, negative 1. So 2 left, 1 down, puts me right there. Okay, And then I'm going to sketch in my ghost Okay, as much as I have room for. So I would go up 1 to the right one, up 1 to the left one, and then from, from the vertex, I'm going up 4. To the, to the right two, up four to the left two. Okay, so this is what it would look like if there were no stretch or compression. But I do have a stretch or compression because I got this thing to deal with, okay? So let's look at that, okay? First thing I'm thinking here, hey, this number is more than one, so I know this is gonna be a narrow, um, narrow parabola compared to the parent graph. So this is somehow gonna get narrower. And now I've got to figure out how. Okay, I'm inside the parentheses multiplying the x directly. That means I've got a horizontal change. The way I remember that, x is the horizontal axis. And if I'm multiplying the x directly, then I've got a horizontal change. Okay, now I'm going to put these two things together. So I'm thinking horizontal means my points can only move left or right. 
Okay, so I can, you know, like play this parabola like an accordion. Can only squeeze it in left or right or pull it apart left and right. I'm thinking, well, if I pull them apart, it's going to end up wider. If I push them together, I'm going to get a narrow parabola. So I know that this is going to then be a compression. So I've got a hor horizontal compression. Okay, and here's how we can deal with this. When we're compressing things, think of the middle of the parabola is right here, right? So I'm squeezing them in towards the middle, and I want to, I'm, I'm going to, it's going to be twice as narrow as the original. So that means if it's twice as narrow, I'm going to push those points in so they're only half the distance from the center that they are right now. So instead of being one unit from the center, I want that to be a half unit. Same thing here. Okay, and up here, these are two units away. I want to take half of that, so one unit away. And then I draw my parabola, and I have my beautiful new parabola that's narrower by way of a horizontal compression. And I've also shifted, done the shifting, I've moved it left two and down one from, from finding the vertex. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to writing a function. Okay. So we're going to write a function for a reflection in the y-axis. So I'm going to do this first and then followed by a vertical stretch. Okay. So I'm going to do those piece by piece. So here's function um, f. I'm going to do my um, reflection first. Okay. So I'll call this function g. So you got to remember from last chapter how we did that. So when you're finding or when you're reflecting over the x-axis, another way if you forget, just think of the point like one one on this graph. If I wanted to reflect this over the y-axis, it would end up over here, right? So if this is one one and this is negative one one, I'd have to change the x value. Okay, so that means I'm taking the opposite of the x. That's the opposite of the input. As opposed to the opposite of the y, if I want the f of x is like y, right? So if I wanted the opposite y, I'd have the negative out there, okay? So then I'm looking at this function and thinking, okay, I'm inputting negative x where the x is, okay? So I'm replacing x with negative x, and it's important that you use parentheses there, okay? Now, when I multiply negative x times itself, it's actually positive x squared because a negative times a negative is positive. Okay, so I kind of end up with exactly what I started with. The reason is because this parabola is going to be centered on the y-axis, just like this one is right here. So when I reflect over the y-axis, it flips, but it looks the exact same, because it's already centered on the y-axis, okay? All right, so I've done my reflection, and now I need to do the vertical stretch. Okay, so function g is after my first, I'll call this function h. I don't care what you call these functions, but I'm just trying to show the different steps, okay? So I'm going to take this one, even though it's actually the same as the original, but um, I'm going to take this one and do a vertical stretch, okay? Um, so a vertical stretch, well, a vertical change, I'm going to do something to the outside. It says the factor is 4 here, so that means I'm going to take 4 times my last function. My last function was g of x. Okay? So then I'm going to input, I'm going to, well, I'm going to substitute, I should say. g of x is equivalent to this, right? So I'm going to take this and replace it. I'm going to take g of x and replace it with the quantity 2x plus 2x squared plus 2. So that means put that in, in parentheses. Anytime you substitute, use parentheses. Otherwise, you might forget that you need to distribute in order to to clean this up, okay? So then I'm gonna get 8x squared plus, plus eight, okay? Not plus two, if you did plus two, you forgot to distribute. And there's my, uh, and again, I don't care if you call it h of x or g of x or whatever, but there is my function, okay? Oh, and that's it for today. All right, see you next time.